that theory does look stuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so we're actually going to go over the river. Yeah, now we are in the river. Yeah, but didn't that sign say that we shouldn't go in the river? Yeah, basically, yeah. when it's open, yeah. yeah. But as you see, there is a road now, so... Yeah. Are you sure it's a road? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no worries. Really? Yeah, you yeah. look a little bit too relaxed for this. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you want to stop and have a look? This is pretty much the middle. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Finland, yeah, and Norway is this way, that way. I see, I see a lot of white actually, Pontus. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or open ice at the moment. That's right. Yeah. Holy shit. It is cold. What's the temperature at the moment? Just minus six. Oh, okay, so it's quite warm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. Wow, this is like. What are we going to start loss? It's like a we are at cold yeah. campers. A little dump in the store. So you find that the, the wheelchair is, uh, why is it difficult with the tatami? Because of the... If you, the, see, you have to have a lot of power to... Turn it, because it's soft. Turn it, right? Yeah. 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 And if you, for example, you do a kata, you want to be able to... Use your hands as well and yeah. sort of multitask. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so that's why, but, but at the same time, if, if people in the wheelchair are doing nevasa practice, they need the tatami. Mm, yeah. So what we need is a floor that can... Do both. Yeah. yeah. And also for some people with bad balance, they, of course they want to fall, when they fall, have a soft fall. But also a soft floor would make it difficult for them to walk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so you sort it's of, a little bit of both. Damned if you do, damned if you don't, in a way. That's right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, we, have you proposed the idea of having two kinds of floor in yeah, this Yeah, I have. Yeah, but but, um, but again, uh, people don't really understand the importance for us because the Judah people want the tatami overall. Yeah. And, and the other people want the hardwood overall. So it, it's a difficult task to mix. Mm -hmm. So this is where you keep all the equipment. Yeah. yeah. Nice and cozy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of small, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also Brazilian Jujus practice here. Okay. Yeah. I see you got some uh, shinai here as well. Yeah, we use for training. Yeah? Yeah. In what way? How do you use them? Uh, that's that's the ABCD concept. Sometimes we we try to regular sugary. Sometimes we, we try to we have to change stance or something. So sometimes yeah. I say maybe we are closer to to Koryu uh, mm -hmm. Kenju mm -hmm. Kendo, but very efficient training for people with stroke. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, why is yeah. that? Because uh, it gets the, the, the weaker side connected by the Shinai. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. So we we use a Shinai and we use a, the Yo, mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For that purpose. So it sort of 
forces a connection, makes you yeah. have to sort of uh, utilize all parts of your body. That's right, yeah. 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 So how many people, uh, stroke victims, do you have that come in? It depends. Now it's going down because they are dying or, or just losing interest. Mm. But when we had the most, maybe 10. Okay. 10, 15. Okay. Two years we had three people dying. Oh, gosh. Yeah. One on practice. Oh, my God. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's not exactly... And she, she, she was the one that captured the Buddha idea. Uh -huh. So when she died, she had told her husband before mm -hmm. that I want to be buried in the dogi. And that's what happened? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in Lurio, we have a Kamidana. Mm. And I say, for us, it's not the religious purpose, but the people that dies from us move into oh, okay. Kamidana. Yeah. Okay. So a kind of remembrance. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the Kamidana has central heating, it's, it's that's right, yeah. at times like this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, or the other one is the main, and this is the satellite. Oh, let me see. These two venues, the one yesterday and this one is our main, main places. It's nice. So you've got the, you got the tatami and, and the hard floor. Yeah, which is a big bonus because you can you can more easily move the wheelchair. Yeah. And, and do the techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a real uh, Honkakuteki Japanese dojo with the, the kamidana and stuff over there. That's right. But actually, that's where the, the dead people move in when they die. They're the people that train with you, yeah. uh, who die. Yeah. So we were talking about the other day, stroke victims and stuff yeah, like that's that. that's right, yeah. So they're looking after you, uh, over you guys. That's right. When, how, and why ABCD was created? From time to time, I, I reflect over that too. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, the, when, I, when I, I started Budo, or actually Judo and Karate to become a better swimmer, but I very quickly, in the end of the 80s, realized that this is a rehabilitation. And um, uh, then, uh, after a few years, I get a scholarship from a Swedish company that makes, um, what do you call, healthcare materials to invent uh, a rehabilitation system for disabled. And I had experienced that uh, karate at the time ha had the same effect on me as uh, physiotherapy. So I wanted to develop uh, that uh, sort of system. And I thought, for example, as an old swimmer, I know that if you want to excel in swimming, you go to the United States or you go to Australia. And I thought for doing the same thing in, in Karate or Budo, uh, you go to Japan. And uh, up until then, I always uh, ask myself, how can I do Karate? How can I do Judo? But when I got into International Budo University, I, I get the opportunity of trying many Budo. And I realized that to reach the full rehab potential, the best is a mix of many Budo and martial arts. Yeah. yeah. So what is it exactly uh, the, the condition that um, uh, led you down the path of first of all being uh, a Paralympic swimmer and uh, then looking at Budo as a, as a way uh, of uh, improving physical faculties and so forth? What, what yeah, uh, yeah, actually and that was also the reason that I go to a Karate Dojo and Judo Dojo was uh, at the time I actually hadn't moved anywhere in the swimming for a long time. And I realized I had to do something. I had to, how to say, uh, add up something to the swimming. Mm. And I realized that martial arts is a, have a very diversity of movements. Mm. So I figured that would increase my ability of swimming as well. Yeah. What is the physical uh, condition that you have that no? Yeah, well, that you had uh, to start with. And uh, I, I'm born with cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, uh, and then when you're born with cerebral palsy, at least in Sweden, you start physiotherapy programs quite early. Yeah. But by the, by the time you are six years old, seven years old, you're dead tired. Mm. So if you want to continue to be physically active and not being bored to death, you have to go to the sports. And I happen to find Budo. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for swimming first and then, and yeah. then Budo. Yeah. yeah, and for a long time, mm. Uh, swimming was the main attraction or main event, yeah, yeah. but but and Budo just complementary. Mm -hmm. But when I stopped swimming, I realized I switch. So Budo became uh, priority number one, and swimming just complementary. Of the Budo that you do, uh, you, you mentioned that you went to the Budo University and various other places, and I see you've, obviously you've got a karate T-shirt on. But uh, how many? Different kinds of budo do you do you practice? I have had experience. I have had the opportunity to try many, mm. but mine, the, the ones that I put in some time really, you know, is a karate and judo. Yeah, karate and yeah. judo. And you also uh, dabble in kendo as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. That, that, that's uh, that's uh, also at International Budo University. I get the opportunity of trying kendo. Mm. And I realized that we can use it in, 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 for example, for people that need for their rehabilitation, we can use, for example, kendo technique mm -hmm. in kendo movement. Yeah. So you're just taking all the various different sort of idiosyncratic movements out of the various budo. That's right. And that's, we used to put it, sometimes we take uh, the whole art. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we take uh, techniques. Yep. Sometimes we take part of techniques, and sometimes we take the essence of the technique, so to speak. It depends on the case. It's a case by case. Yeah. yeah. And so to sort of help sort of promote this idea that you you discovered, yeah, really through your own experience, you uh, uh, created the A B C D. Uh, yeah, that's actually the uh, idea of, uh, of Matsi Kantoro Sensei at okay. uh, International Buddha University, Association of Budo Culture for mm -hmm. Disabled. Mm -hmm. Because he also, he thought that Budo is culture, mm -hmm. so, and it should have a cultural connection. So that's, that's the name, mm -hmm. yeah. And so what does the, uh, the organization do? First of all, what is it? Is it a, it's an MPO or...? Uh, here, here it's an MPO and internationally we try to just build a network mm -hmm. because we understand that the, uh, the circumstances in the United States or Canada mm -hmm. or Hong Kong or whatever in the world should be... is very different. So we just used to say that we are a network. Mm -hmm. we, we are a network that try to collect knowledge mm -hmm and provide an opportunity for disabled people to experience uh, uh, Japanese culture. Right. And so once you uh, got involved with ABCD and you set it up in Sweden, uh, then, as you say, being a network, I guess that was when you sort of started realizing that there were many other groups around the world yeah. that weren't actually connected with each other. That's right, and uh, that's one of the points with ABCD, to try to connect that we know about each other. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, when I started Budo training, for example, I think I knew of five people around Europe that did the same. Of course, there should have been more, and m but not many more. But just because of the this this time with internet and everything, everybody it has exploded, mm -hmm. and we can easily connect. All right. Yeah. And so, what is the, what are the goals of ABCD? Uh, obviously, uh, promoting uh, Budo culture as a way of uh, helping or w uh, people um, train their bodies. Yeah, their train minds. their bodies and, and yeah. train their minds mm -hmm. also a little bit because. Yeah. If only training body, yeah. they can go to any sports. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we want also a little bit of the mental aspect. Right. Yeah. I guess part of your uh, your well important part of your job is to not only uh, introduce Budo culture to disabled people because I guess there's a, a kind of a preconceived idea that Budo yeah. is for athletes, yeah, that's right. strong, yeah. you know, uh, macho yeah. sort of sort of things. But Budo is for everybody and anybody. So to get uh, 
rid of that preconception among people with disabilities, but also among martial artists of course. Who, um, who don't have disabilities. That's right. right. And also among organizations, regular organizations is that, and that's, uh, uh, the ABCD goal would be not being necessary anymore. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to blend yeah. into regular Budo. Yeah, yeah. But all around the world, and sometimes we uh, discover that there is not a 100% acceptance at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, the purpose of ABCD there is to a little bit um, be a supporting network for organizations that are already there. There and they want they wonder how to how should we do mm -hmm. and ju just so they can connect to something. And the other thing is, uh, uh, in some organizations, doesn't understand about uh, a, when you have a disability. Uh, maybe you get, I mean, uh, how to say? It? Let's let's put it in, for example, in the grading system. Maybe they say you can only grade to seventh Q or uh, sixth Q because you have the disability. You can't do up to to first down or so. So we also try to keep. Uh, you can, if you want, you can do also Q down grading in the ABCD in Sweden. But this this is also something that every part of the network decide by themselves. So what you're doing, your activities um, to provide support uh, for um, you know, various sectors of the community, people who are interested in martial arts or people that uh, are teaching and suddenly have students that have special needs or something. What yeah. sort of support do you uh, provide and how do you do it? Uh, the most of it is just giving an idea of, of what you can do because we we don't have any money, so we can't give financial support or or as a hardcore support. But at least we will be uh, somewhere where people can turn when they have questions about how to do. Mm -hmm. Because over the years, almost we have had any kind of disability. Mm. So what are the what are the biggest hurdles that you face? Uh, I think we've already gone through them. It's prejudice and and. Uh, uh, not really uh, acceptance about what we are doing. It's it's kind of weird to people, from as you you pointed from from both sides, from regular Buddha society, and from disabled people that think they can, they cannot do Buddha. Mm. Yeah, so it's pretty much the biggest. And also uh, financial. In Sweden, we have a problem because to get it financially done, because we 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 want to be a cultural association or cultural network but in Sweden if you do budo you have to be in the sports field and we don't really fit on fit in anywhere mm. so we have a problem with funding actually so what measures are you taking uh, to uh, alleviate some of these uh, problems that you have uh, how, how, ha do you, how do you promote yourself um, we, we try we try to to promote by by, by um, Internet and all, but for Swedish people, our idea of uh, culture, martial arts, is a little bit hard to grasp. Mm. So it's actually very difficult for us to explain what we are doing, because uh, at once, as I told you, just uh, they want to put us in a sports field. So Pontus, what uh, can you tell me about uh, ABCD's short-term? medium-term and long-term goals? Yeah, uh, short-term goal, or we don't, actually, we don't know when, when it's going to happen, but w what I want to, uh, the Buddha is not, the, the actual training is now really going by itself locally. Uh, so now we want to, to turn to our attention to how to say? Uh, one part of the ABCD is to provide experience in Japanese culture. And since we have many members that, due to disability, have a problem of traveling and actually experience uh, culture in Japan or elsewhere, actually, so we want to try to bring the culture experience, even if you're in your home, like for e learning, for example. If you have a problem experience that it's live, it, 
it will, and also to to uh, how to say to develop the, the culture sides of ABCD. Uh, as I said, so again, for for Japanese maybe Budo is culture, but for for other people it's may it's Budo and culture. Culture for them is singing and dancing and yeah. So there's a kind of a disparity in the conceptual understanding that they're yeah. trying to overcome, right? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, what you're trying to say to the Swedish people in particular is that Budo is not just a sport, but it has so many different aspects to it, which uh, that's right, uh, which yeah. help uh, anybody, regardless of their nationality or their physical condition or their mental condition. It helps them grow as a human yeah. being, and you want to you want to tap into all of that rather yeah. than just the physical side of it, right? That's right, and and it's also very important because if you have a disability, of course, the improvement of physical training is to become better, so to speak, but. You, you may have a disability that makes you, even if you train, you deteriorate. Uh, so uh, it's very important to have the, mis uh, the mental and cultural aspect there and explain what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Personally, um, what have been the biggest, the, your biggest personal hurdle that you've had to overcome? Uh, and from now, what are the things that are on your mind uh, that you uh, would like to achieve or accomplish in the uh, in the uh, coming year? Coming me years? personally? Yeah, personally. Well, actually, it was when I was very young, of course, to start walking, mm -hmm. and now recently, since 2014, when I, I suffer from sepsis, to continue to uh, train Budo because I. I but the reason I continued was that I realized coming back from sepsis that I tell other people with disabilities, oh, it's healthy for you to, to train and please train Buddha, it's very good for you. So I thought I shouldn't stop doing Buddha because of the sepsis. I should try just another way to do the same thing and stay on, even if it's more it's less now than ever before, but still continue. So you have uh, found a new lease of life, perhaps a different kind of motivation now yeah. to continue, as in you have to set an example. Yeah, uh, or I think this kind of activity really from the beginning maybe already set some kind of example, but to me it became true, I have to withstand what I'm saying. Yeah. By continuing. You have to practice what you preach, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, in terms of uh, what you have planned for the next year or two, uh, uh, for yourself? Yeah. Uh, 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 for next year, we hope to, for the first time, uh, settle a, a membership and or uh, instructor tour to Japan. Uh, for for uh, experience Japanese culture for one part, and to practice Budo for, for the instructor part. That, that's the big project right now. And if, if uh, we are successful, or we have hoped for many years, but we haven't been able to settle everything, is to have a continuous uh, exchange with Japan. We are going there, and they are coming here. Yeah. So that's what you're aiming for at the moment, yeah? yeah. I think we have quite a good uh, relationship right now with the, with the doctors and medical institutions. So they know where they can send people to get some physical right. exercise yeah. And, yeah. and some training in the martial arts. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you uh, make that connection with the doctors? Did you just go and see them? or? Uh, yeah, go and see them. And actually before, um, um, the physiotherapist program of, of Lula Technical University yeah. include uh, one day of Budo introduction. Oh yeah. Yeah. So new physiotherapists get an idea of Budo. Yeah.